Hey friends, Dave here. I'm uh, just out and about doing some errands. Um, today's a special day for me and my wife because it's our 18th year wedding anniversary. 18, can you believe that? Um, we got married at 19, so we spent the first sort of 10 years even getting used to ourselves um, and learning, you know, who we are, let alone who one another were. So um, we have gone through uh, a lot of challenges and and uh, yeah, a lot of seasons, but uh, it's it's been fantastic. I'm incredibly blessed um, to call Natalie my friend um, and my wife and uh, a mother to my children. Um, we had breakfast, uh, we just went out for brunch. And, uh, and the reason I shot this is because I wanted to share with you um, part of our discussion. I asked Natalie, why, what do you reckon it's taken us to build a good and strong marriage because we um, we've had our ups and downs, but um, especially the last five years or more, um, just have been progressively better and better, going from strength to strength. Um, and unfortunately, we see a lot of um, people in our age bracket, a lot of friends over the years who um, their marriage just didn't work out for them, and. Um, uh, for, for various reasons and I'm, I'm not standing here in judgment or criticism or accusation for them and they would know that um, but for us what has helped us build a strong marriage um, she said I reckon it's because we've chosen and been intentional in our own heart journey in um, creating and investing in our own character in working our crap out in um, you know, becoming better us, better at being us and coming to understand ourselves and our partners better. And she's absolutely right. We, um, we have a, a strong, strong marriage. We have um, a, a great, strong family uh, culture, um, which we protect and put boundaries around. Um, we are, we're both Christians, as many of you know, and because we follow Jesus, we, we follow love. And so love is a priority. Nonviolence is a priority. Um, kindness and respect are a priority. Um, and so is um, personal development. And so we have spent um, so much time, so much money, so much energy, so many uh, tears and years in um, working through our own crap um, so that we can be better connected to ourselves, better connected to each other, um, uh, better connected to God, of course. Um, that's where the time and effort has been put into, is us being intentional, being deliberate um, in doing the heart journey, in dealing with stuff. That's why we went and did, I think it was six years ago for our wedding anniversary. No, it would have been five five years ago for our wedding anniversary I think it was yeah we we were we did an Elijah house course one of our first schools together and Elijah house is a pre ministry training um, course but we wanted to learn more about us more dynamics about the heart what the Bible had to say about it and what Jesus um, you know could guide us through and we were given language and tools and things which allowed us to deconstruct um, the destructive parts of our hearts and uh, and allow God to just reestablish those things and so yeah she's absolutely right the the thing we we don't have a whole stack of money um, we, we 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 are blessed there's nothing we don't you know uh, nothing we we really want for we don't we don't have a mortgage we rent but we we, you know what, we've seen a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into creating financial wealth and uh, they, all they have is a house and they don't have a home. And so building a strong home begins with building strong hearts and being committed to the heart journey and sorting your own crap out, taking care of your own rubbish, um, and being open to feedback, being humble, and, uh, and most of all, loving ourselves, loving each other, and being committed to move forward, being committed to know that you're not finished, you haven't arrived. Um, great prayer together, yeah, that's that's important. Great sex, important as well. Great communication, absolutely. All those things are important. But um, being committed to a life of transformation, being committed to a life um, uh, um, that is, is not lived out of denial or fantasy uh, and knows that everything's great and rosy, 
um, but being honest, being honest with feedback and wanting for a better marriage. So yeah, if I was going to give some advice to people who are married on the marriage journey, however many years, invest in your own self, invest in your own heart. I'm surprised, I've, I've talked to people and I've said, look, you probably want to invest in a counsellor or go to see a psychologist, go see a marriage counsellor, go do a, uh, some sort of transformation course, do something to invest and they're like, look, I don't have the money yet, they're driving um, you know, brand new cars, they've got huge mortgages and I said, well, it's not that you don't want to, you've just chosen not to. Um, you know, if you, if, it, if you were desperate to grow a good marriage, you'd make a way to do that. You'd, you'd sell your house, you'd go rent cheaper, do, get, get another job or, or get less of a job. Um, somebody quit, do something. If money's your obstacle, go and find a way to do it. If time's your obstacle, you go and find a way to do it. Um, if, if today you found out you had cancer and, um, and you, were, you were stuck and, uh, and you had to change your lifestyle in order to eat healthier, exercise more, um, or go on some sort of um, a chemo or something, you would immediately adjust your life in order to get rid of that and to fight that. And yet, when there's cancers in our marriage and cancers in our relationship, so often um, people aren't willing to do it, and so you, you get that consequence. And so, again, I don't stand here in, 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 uh, in judgment, but you know what? Um, this is something that I, I talked about a, a couple weeks ago when I was... Um, preaching for a good friend uh, of mine, Gary, and good friends of mine, Gary and Sarah Morgan at Hillview Church in Melbourne. Um, and there was just a great, um, a great presence of God there. And, um, you know, he's, he's a, a prophetic man and the pulpit there, there was so much revelation and knowledge going on. And, you know, I, I just went with the flow and, and spoke and I, and I truly believe, um, what came out of my mouth, um, even though I hadn't sort of premeditated it, that the the next revival that we're going to see, where the renewal, the revival, all this stuff, it's not going to happen in meetings on Sunday. It's going to happen in homes. It's going to look like family dinners. It's going to look like strong marriages. It's going to look like um, things that matter um, to God. That Sunday, the Sunday service, that's going to be an overflow from a good, strong family. Um, it's going to be an overflow from revival in the home where where um, love is priority, where God is priority. Um, and the next great revival, the miracles will be in restored hearts and homes and marriages and lives and kids. Um, and, and Sunday will just be the overflow. That'll be the extension service. But the main service will happen every day in a home where where love and intentionality happen that we intentionally gather together and we prioritize love and relationship with God and each other. So anyway, that's a bit of extra at the end. <laughs> but uh, bless your hope some of those uh, tips have helped. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to connect, my uh, the blog is uh, www.davidtenson.com or leaderheart.org is our ministry webpage. And um, we help leaders and organizations um, stay healthy. And so um, you can connect with us on Facebook as well, David Tenson, T-E-N-S-E-N. Bless your heaps.